Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's video. We are going to be talking about the topic of 4-bit GGUF quantized 7 billion parameter open source chat models. We have in LLMware 0.1.12, we've added support for GGUF, which really opens up the door to do some really interesting things with some other quantized models. So in today's video, we're actually going to be talking about open source chat, some ways that you can use these models. And then we're going to show a demo of actually how easy it is to get started running locally on your laptop some state-of-the-art 7 billion parameter chat fine-tuned models. Now, so much of what we do is in RAG and retrieval augmented generation, financial services and legal. And we focused pretty extensively with our Dragon and Bling model series on how you optimize for those types of environments in which you really want fact-based, rigorous question answering, analysis, extraction, stick just to the facts in financial context or in reviewing information that comes out of a legal contract or regulation. That's closed context. Context. But one of the things we've been thinking about a lot lately is there's also some environments in which it's open context. What you're looking for is not perhaps out of a set of documents, a very specific piece of information or fact where we would always recommend thinking about it in a closed context way, but where you're thinking about, could you write an outline or could you help me think through a particular topic or give a sort of a mini essay, an expansive articulation of a particular subject and bring some creativity to bear. And this is actually an area where we started to look at some of the new newest 7 billion parameter chat models, thinking perhaps not necessarily about an even an interactive chat context, but really thinking about what role they could play in some of this more open context and expansive kinds of analysis that actually do come into a RAG context from time to time. So what's new? I'm going to take maybe a one minute detour here just to give a quick background. Some of the things that we've brought into LLMware, they're going to be enabling the demo and enabling the use case that we're going to show to be so simple out of the box. So the first thing that we've done, and this is a subject of another video, video that we've published is we've actually created four bit GGUF versions of three of the Dragon models, Dragon E, Llama, and Mistral, and there'll be more coming as well. I mean, what this actually enables is to do, you know, detailed things, contract analysis and invoice analysis and structured RAG analysis and extraction and question answering the documents and to do some really sophisticated state of the art stuff running locally on a laptop with these GGUF models. And the way that we've done this is under the covers in LLMware, we've actually integrated pre-built shared libraries for Llama CPP, and we've used, because we thought it was actually a great interface, the interface from the C Transformers library in terms of how it packages the C++ interface with C types in Python. And so we've pre-built those shared libraries for four common platforms for the Mac 64, the Mac 86, Windows, and Linux 86 that actually come shipped with the library pre-built. We've also created a new model class to handle GGUF models in LLMware that handles all the implementation details. It also then, for people that have created their own custom build from source optimized Llama CPP libraries, it enables them to sort of bring in and to leverage those as well. And then what it enables in LLMware is a really, really simple interface. You install LLMware and you can start prompting these models the same way that you would with any other model simply by invoking the model name. And so what we decided to do is to take this one step further. You know, the Dragon models are LLMware models that we built, but we want LLMware to be you know, an open ecosystem and we want to leverage and draw on the best in open source. And so we started looking at all of the leading open source chat models. And there are four that we wound up doing extensive testing on and that we added to our default model catalog. I'll be very honest with you. It had probably been a few months since we had really done a deep dive looking at some of the 7 billion parameter chat fine-tuned models, but I think we were absolutely blown away the quality and capability of some of the recent models that have come out in the last few months. We're going to show that to you in a demo, and on top of all that, we're going to show it to you running locally on a laptop. Our vision you know, around GGUF, we think this is really a game changer. GGUF and 4-bit quantization. And so what we want to provide is the most seamless, easiest to use out-of-the-box integration so that you can leverage all of these advances in open source, a lot of them happening with 7 billion parameter models, and bring them quantized so that you can start running inference locally or in a private cloud environment and start integrating it into RAG workflows. So uh, the four models, and these are four models that have 
have been quantized by the bloke. If you don't know the bloke, you should go to his Hugging Face page. Uh, the bloke has quantized and built more GGF models than probably anybody in the world. And he has published over 3,000 of them on Hugging Face. We've taken these four models, all of which have been four bit quantized by the bloke. You see the, the individual model provider. There's the Zephyr model that was published by Hugging Face, which in turn itself is a fine tune of a Mistral model. There's the Open Hermes model by Technium, which also is a fine tune of a Mistral model. There's the Llama 2 chat model, which we think is probably underrated. It's actually a fantastic model. And then finally, we picked one that just came out a couple of weeks ago, published by a team at Berkeley, Go Bears, called the Starling model. All the licensing information, all of these are in open source. They're all published on Hugging Face. We include links in our Banchan repository to all of the license information. Check that out just to make sure that if you decide to use any of these models in your project, that the underlying license that you are in compliance with it. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take you through a scenario to show how easy it is with LLMware now to use one of these 4-bit quantized models and start running some inference against it. So the setup, all we're going to do is we're going to pip install. Please do pip install the latest version. And as I mentioned, this is coming packaged with some shared libraries that are built to these specific platforms. So please use one of these specific platforms if you want to use one of these models out of the box. Otherwise, you will have to go out and sort of build from source the underlying Llama CPP model. And finally, this example that I'm going to run through, it's a really, really simple piece of code, but it is available as an example our LLM or GitHub repository. Let me flip over and we are going to look at the code and then we're going to run demo here. Very, very simple. Couldn't be simpler. For those who have seen some LLM where demo scripts before, this is pretty standard boilerplate code. We're going to load a model. We're going to iterate through a prompt list. We're going to feed the query prompter.prompt main call, and then we're going to print it out to the screen. You'll notice there's no mention here of GGUF, and this is by design. One of the things we're trying really hard to do in our load model method is a really clear, simple abstraction. So when it comes to a model, all you should have to worry about is the model name. All the implementation details or anything that's specific about the model should go underneath that in the underlying model class. And the person calling the model shouldn't have to worry about any of that. You should be able to mix and match and swap in and swap out models without having to change any of your code that's making the inference. So what we're going to do, this is actually the set of questions that we're going to start to loop through. I don't think we'll get through all of it, but I'll at least start to show you a handful of them. These are just nice open-ended topics where what we really are looking for the model to do is what we believe these chat models are really excellent. Think about a topic or a relationship between some topics or concepts and give, relying on some general understanding of general knowledge, relying on the semantic understanding of the relationship between words and in the ability then to articulate in structured ways, give an outline of what are some of the things that we should be thinking about in response to this question. So we're just going to start looping through some of these queries. Please feel free to adapt these questions to anything that you'd want as you run this experiment. And then all we're going to do is we're going to run the test and we're going to pass in the model name. Again, for full transparency, it's really easy to mix and match. The model names that we've kept match up to the bloke's model name from Hugging Face and makes it very easy to substitute in, substitute out, as well as for you to get very intuitively any additional information that you would want about what the bloke has done with quantization or any additional information that you'd want about the underlying model. All we're going to do now, we're going to run one. We're going to use this Starling 7 billion parameter model. And as with any model, when you're doing local loading, it is going to take 15, 20, sometimes 30 seconds for that first inference because the model is being loaded into memory. And you can see the questions that we're going to ask are really open-ended. You know, what topics should I look at? How should I be thinking about a particular problem? What recommendation would you have for me? And then we're just going to take a look at the answers. And all the answers are going to be longer. They are going to be paragraph length with you know multiple bullet points. So each inference we found takes 20 to 40 seconds. So it's not blazing fast. The output, I think, is pretty stunningly great. This is the output from the Starling model. And you can see it, it did a really nice job of structuring and decomposing the topics that we should research. They're all on point, the English and the language around it 
is very clear and well-written. The relationship between the concepts and the subjects is spot on. This is exactly the kind of analysis that you would expect a pretty thoughtful person with some knowledge in the banking industry to be able to give to you. The only reason it stops at the end was just a stopping condition that we put in the inference for the purpose of this demo. Otherwise, it would continue to go a little bit longer until it naturally reached an end of string token. Second question, you know, what are some tips for creating a successful business plan? I mean, again, you can see a very, very thoughtful distillation of the key topics that would comprise a business plan with really well thought out structure and language. This is exactly the kind of essay or response that you would expect to come from a fairly educated and sophisticated professional in answering your question. And you can see not that slow, 26 seconds to go produce a really well designed and well written paragraph. Here was a question about you know, an event that happened a few years ago. What did you think about this acquisition? Um, just to get some insights into its view and how it could articulate the pros and the cons around the position. You can see there more work um, in terms of cleaning up some of the context around that. What are the best books to read for a class on American literature? Again, a pretty nice list of distilling some good conventional wisdom about you know, popular books with really clear summary of it. Interesting question, You know, what should I know about my local school district. And again, all these questions we've tried to frame, not as a, you tell me about facts, but help me think through a particular problem. And again, you can see the model answered actually just the way you'd expect GPT-4 or chat GPT to respond saying, you know, I don't have real-time information, but here are some of the key points and considerations. You get a pretty thoughtful analysis. What are some good books for me to read? Finally, uh, this will be the last one that we'll take a look at are, what are some differences between the four principal cloud computing service models? Let's wait for that answer. And hopefully, even though this has been a quick look, I hope everybody runs this experiment, takes the time to really look at some of these models because the type of language that they're generating, the type of content that they're creating in response to these sorts of questions is astonishingly good. And so, you know, it's really opened our eyes to the potential to start leveraging these models for these more open context types of creative analysis, framework, create a topic, create an outline, give us a couple of paragraphs, start an essay, to the extent that those sorts of things tie into a RAG use case. Four models here, and you can get started using them right out of the box. Pip install LLMware, run this script, and you can start generating some of your own inferences locally with these models. We hope that you've enjoyed today's video. There is a lot more to come on GGUF, on 4-bit quantization, and increasingly leveraging some of these best-in-class open source models in all sorts of creative use cases for RAG within LLMware. Thanks again, everybody, and have a great day.